You want to eat? Sure, but it's your turn to pay. Oh, man. So look, remember this morning when we recovered the stolen artifacts? Those guys might have noticed me. Things got a little heated. Then there was that beautiful moment. Me making my escape. Enemies in hot pursuit. You taking that shot, covering my back, and giving me a boost. Que baja causa. But I uh, lost my wallet and all the excitement. Don't worry. I got you. Ah, uh, just kidding. <laughs> hey, Paya. It's on me tonight. Gracias, tía. In war, strategy and forward thinking is key. The warrior who can plan ahead and anticipate his opponent's next move or step is the one who can win far more battles than the one who simply shoots blindly with a slim hope of success. Goyo is a testament to the art of strategy and planning, but that doesn't mean he's not without a very explosive element. Cesar Hernandez was born in Sonola, in Sonola, Mexico, in a very dangerous area where gang violence was a common occurrence. After a bomb destroyed his house, killing his father and sister and severely injuring his mother, it became crucial that Caesar find an outlet in which he could avoid the criminal element of his surroundings. His mother taught him quickly how to observe his surroundings, recognize right from wrong, and think critically about every decision he makes. He enrolled at Heroic Naval Military School, where he graduated as a lieutenant. He went on to join the Naval Infantry and then later the Amphibious Commando Battalion, where he participated in various high-profile arrests and anti-smuggling operations. It didn't take long for Goyo to learn that the drug market was not the biggest activity of the major cartels anymore, and he learned that the real money for these organizations lay in trafficking antiquities. Okay, sorry. Got to pause there. What? That's, that's the big money maker? What? Okay, back to it. It was during his joint operations with Interpol that Rainbow took notice of his tactical mind and forward-thinking disposition. In 2019, Goyo was recruited into Rainbow along with his friend Amaru. Harry found that Goyo was a very sharp mind and capable of figuring people out in a very short amount of time. In their first one-on-one -on -one session, Goyo demonstrated this by playing Harry in chess and winning in a short number of moves. Goyo is one who thinks carefully before he speaks, but when he does speak, there's always a point he wants to make. Harry enjoyed having Goyo appear in briefings or tactical meetings for his unconventional suggestions, and because Goyo has such a knack for out-of-the-box thinking, he often contributes ideas and suggestions that others may not have the insight to offer. This makes him valuable for exploring new ideas and teaching his colleagues to do the same thing. In 2021, Goyo helped to recruit Operator Flores on Ash's behalf, and during the Rainbow and Nighthaven split, Goyo did indeed remain with Rainbow. Though he recognized the potential in going with Nighthaven, he also remembered his lessons from his youth, to be careful who you interact with. He knew Rainbow, but he barely knew Nighthaven, and what little he did know about them, well, he wasn't impressed. Goyo joined Red Hammer Squad under the leadership of Thermite, where he offers his unique tactical edge to every operation that they're deployed on. In terms of his gadget, Goyo carries the Vulcan Detonator Device. He carries four of these at the start of the round. Goyo can place these detonators on any flat, solid surface and, if damage is done to the red canister on the device, it will explode and spread fry around the location it was planted. The flames do 36 points of damage per second and will last for 20 seconds. They do not destroy gadgets when detonated, but they can hurt both friendly and hostile operators. Detonators on windows, doors, hatches, or other destroyable surfaces have the potential to explode the device if the surface they're planted on is destroyed. In terms of loadout, Goyo carries two primary weapons and one secondary weapon into battle. For primary weapons, he carries the Vector 45 ACP submachine gun, one of the most infamous submachine guns in the game. It has the highest rate of fire of any submachine gun in the game, but it also has a small magazine size, so it burns through ammo pretty fast. It has a high damage output and low bullet drop-off, however the gun becomes harder to handle at longer ranges and for sustained fire, meaning that it's smarter to use in small rapid bursts and with a vertical grip in order to maintain control of the gun.
Next is the TCS G12 shotgun. It's a lot like the Boss G that Dokabi has in that it fires a single slug and is effective at longer ranges. It has incredible high damage per shot and can down any operator in about two blows. It does have a strong kick, but the spread is marginal. It simply suffers from a low magazine capacity, meaning that careful aim is crucial with this shotgun. In some ways, I'd compare it to a marksman rifle that just fires slugs. And yes, I would argue it's a bit better than the Boss G in the sense that the Boss G can only fire twice before needing to be reloaded, while this one's a little better. And then for sidearms, the P229 is one you may already be familiar with, as we talked about its close brother, the P229 MK25, and that was Mute's gun, if you'll remember. But there are a few marginal differences. It has a pretty solid damage output, but with a laughable magazine capacity to compensate, and with only four full magazines to use in game, that can make it seem a little lackluster. But its tight firing capability and low recoil make it a very viable handgun, but besides that, it's the only one that Goyo can use, so, I mean, I wouldn't diss it. When using Goyo, it's, well, all right, I'll be clear. Goyo is difficult to use, I'm afraid. His guns are fine, but his gadget requires careful planning and consideration. I personally like to plant the Vulcans on doors and entryways because if the doors are destroyed, then the Vulcan can do fast damage to the enemy on the other side and deny their entry. The downside is that smart enemies will try to flee the flames, meaning it won't kill them, just merely take a little bit of health, and it also has the potential to hurt you or your allies if detonated near them. Many times my allies have been hurt or killed because they were too close to a Vulcan when it went off. And for that reason, communication is going to be your best friend in setting those Vulcans. Other options include teaming up with maybe Malusi to sh slow down opponents who wander into the Vulcan fire, or you can team up with Maestro who can use his evil eye to shoot the Vulcans from a safe distance. There are options, but they require coordination and planning, and if you can manage that, then Goyo can definitely work wonders for you. I'll be honest, and this is going to sound bad, but I'm not a huge fan of Goyo. His gadget is honestly more flash than fire. While the fire can do real damage to your opponents, they are a double-edged weapon in every meaning of the phrase. Doing damage to your allies as well as your enemies, and because your allies won't even consider the threat of your own gadget, they're far more likely to be caught in the fire than your enemies half the time. And unless stopped by something, Goyo's fire is easily escapable, not killing anyone. His guns are fine, but I wouldn't say they're anything too special. The Vector does have a high rate of fire, but for someone like me with a bad aiming ability, it's not my go-to weapon. His shotgun is incredible, but again, I'm not very good with it. I have more luck with his handgun. And again, people would argue, well, that's just because you're casual. People who are good at the game will get more... Uh, get more good stuff out of these weapons and for sure i agree with that but by that logic they could get something good out of any weapon that they're given and as for the lore it's fine i guess it's just not very engaging i like the idea of a forward-thinking individual who looks outside the box for new ideas and ways of approaching problems but i mean there are questions i have and the biggest one is his lore says he discovered the antiquities trafficking ring trafficking ring as a big money-making thing for the cartels and i'm like 
Really? So it's not sex trafficking, human trafficking, drug dealing, gun running, or any of that stuff? It's none of that? It's selling antiquities and antiques? Um, okay. Is it because your teammate is Amaru and she's like an archaeologist or something? I, man, I don't, I don't get that. Look, I just feel as if Goyo's story is lacking. It's nothing terrible, but it feels convenient and a little underwhelming. It's not that I dislike him, far from it. It's, I, I mean, I'm still going to call this a win. I'm not going to call this a cringe, but... I just expect more from a fiery guy like this. But anyway, that takes care of Goyo. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you in my next one. Take care.